Hey, what's up, tubers? It's Tony, and today I'm going to be using the Chevy Silverado for demonstrational purposes in today's video and to show you how to figure out and determine if the AC compressor in your truck or car has died for one reason or another. I'm going to be giving you a couple of helpful hints and tips on what you should check and look at first before you just simply assume that the AC compressor has failed. I'm going to be upfront with you guys. Today's video is going to be about 20 minutes long and it's being made for those of you who wish to learn to diagnose your own air conditioning system and or make minor repairs as needed. Okay. It is an extremely hot day where you live. You got in your vehicle, started the car, turned the air on, all to notice that warm air is blowing out of your vents. What could possibly be wrong? Well, the first thing you want to do is check to make sure that the AC compressor is working. And how do you do that? Start the vehicle, turn the air on. This clutch right here should start spinning. All AC compressors look like the one displayed in front of you. All AC compressors should have a clutch wheel on the front of it. All AC compressors on trucks for the most part sit out in the open like on the Silverado. That's why I'm using it today. The average AC compressor on a car or van will sit in some tight dark hole. So if you needed to investigate something with respect to the AC compressor, you need to get a flashlight and go down in some dark hole and start checking things out. Make sure the engine is cold when you go down there so you don't get burned. So to test the AC compressor, start the vehicle, turn the air on, this clutch will start spinning, turn the air off, this clutch will stop spinning to let you know that the AC compressor is functioning correctly. By the way, there's nothing wrong with the AC compressor or air conditioning system in this vehicle today. So with the vehicle running, I'm now going to turn the air on and this wheel will start spinning. Notice that that clutch wheel is spinning around. It lets you know that the AC compressor is functioning correctly. Okay. When I turn the vehicle off, the clutch, when I turn the air off, the clutch wheel will stop spinning. Notice that it stops spinning. I want you folks to keep in mind that even if this wheel does not spin, it does not mean that the AC compressor is dead, okay? So, let's say you did my little test and this wheel did not spin. What's the next thing you want to check? You want to check the fuse panel, locate the fuse that powers the AC compressor and make sure that it's not blown. You want to check the electrical wires running to and from the AC compressor. You're looking for damaged wires or any type of damage or fault to the electrical connector itself. If you find such fault, that could possibly be a reason as to why your AC compressor is not working. So let's say you check the fuse, no problem. You check the wiring, no problem. What's the next thing you want to check? Well, the next thing you want to check is the system. And you want to check the system to see if it's either empty or extremely low on Freon. And how do you do that? You get yourself one of these AC gauges from Walmart, Harbor Freight, etc. You want to locate the high side and low side service ports like on this Chevy Silverado. Start the engine, turn the air on the highest setting. And then you want to take this coupler here and attach it to the low side port only. Don't worry guys, it will not attach to the high side port. It is not designed to attach to the high side port. And once you attach it, the next thing you're gonna do is take a reading. As you're taking your reading, you should be in the green if the vehicle is correctly filled with Freon. But for example, let's say that you're in between 10 and 30, which tells you that you're very low on Freon in your system and possibly could have a leak. What you want to do is get yourself a can of Freon with the UV leak detector in it. It's nothing more than dye. And what you want to do is some of the cans come with their own attachment. Start the vehicle, turn the air on the highest setting. You want to add a half can only of this Freon with UV leak detector first. Your objective is to bring the system up to about 40 PSI and keep in mind some larger vehicles, the PSI rating may be slightly higher on it. So you may want to check to make sure you're achieving the correct PSI. 
why add only a half can if by the time you add a half can of Freon to the system you don't see this wheel kick in and start spinning more than likely your AC compressor has died for one reason or another let's say you're completely empty like this gauge says add a half can if by the time you add a half can to the system this wheel does not start spinning your AC compressor has died for one reason or another now let's say in this next case and only if the wheel is spinning if it spins start with a half can again your goal is to bring the system up to about 40 psi and then go into the vehicle and check and see if that has made the um, air conditioning system colder okay if it has then you want to watch the system over a couple days because more than likely you have a leak if it blowing warm air you want to run your system for a couple days anyway giving the freon and dye a chance to move all throughout your air conditioning system okay and then after a couple of days of running your air conditioning system you want to get yourself one of these uv lights harbor freight walmart your local auto parts store and you want to look at every visible line and hose within your air conditioning system and what you're looking for is some sort of leak or dye to glow keep in mind folks you can have a hole that's so big where you'll hear the freon coming out and or see it you can also develop a very small hole on the back of this aluminum ac line and never know it's there so make sure you check every visible part of the air conditioning system checking for leaks for those of you with old receiver and dryers that are rusted, check behind it, check on the side of it, check beneath it. My experience has been you can have a leak anywhere on this puppy. See this AC line here, follow it, see where it goes. Notice that it goes back against the firewall and is encased in some sort of rubber hose. My experience has been you could have a leak back there with behind that rubber hose or inside of that rubber hose and never know it, okay? So check everywhere, okay? For those of you with cars where your AC compressor sits down in some dark hole, you want to get your UV light when the engine is cold, go down in there and look at every single connection running to and from the AC compressor. Look at the AC compressor itself, okay? With your UV light running everywhere, notice what happens when I run it over the low side service port. See, it glows. So when you find your leak with your UV light, it should glow just like that to let you know that that's where your problem is, okay? Folks usually ask me, can you replace the low side service port on your vehicle? To my knowledge, you cannot. However, on GM products, you can replace the high side service port. Let's say you develop a leak around the um, threads or the O-ring went bad and you need to replace this um, high side service port. They make a special socket for this to turn it in and turn it out safely. And I'll show you and give you that part number a little bit later, okay? But let's say you thought you had a leak at the low side service port or the high side service port. Inside of the service ports are Schrader valves. They're nothing more than little valves that go bad. See it down in there. How do you know when the Schrader valve has gone bad, guys? You could put your finger over the port if you feel pressure. You know you have a leak. You can put a small balloon over the service port if it blows up, you know you have a leak. You could spray water inside of there if it bubbles up, you know you have a leak. If the valve is stuck open, even with the cap on or off, you may see excessive Freon dripping down, which is a sign that you have a leak, okay? For those of you that need to replace the high side only service port for whatever reason, there is the GM part number made by Dorman. It even tells you on the back that it's for high side only, okay? They make many different type of Schrader valve removal tools and these things are not magnetic, okay? They all do the same thing for the most part, guys. And 
how do you use this tool guys when the Schrader valve is sitting in its spot most Schrader valves sit like this or like this they very saw them sit upside down where this little Schrader valve inside will just fall out basically what you do to get that out is take your tool put it down into the service port you're going to know that it's in place because when you rock it back and forth you'll feel resistance in this case it'll be lefty loosey righty tighty just turn it as best you can until you think it's loose and only because I have the Schrader valve in the service port in my hand will the Schrader valve then just fall out okay you can find these Schrader valve sets on Amazon your local auto parts store any place online to get the Schrader valve back in guys you just have to put it in there and in this case it would be righty tighty lefty loosey now I told you a little bit earlier that the Schrader valve removal tools are not magnetic if you find that you're having a difficult time removing a Schrader valve you can get yourself a small pair of needle nose pliers and go in there and grab the head of the Schrader valve that's one thing the next thing you want to do is verify and make sure that your Schrader valve especially if your equipment is original some manufacturers Schrader valves are not meant to be removed meaning you have to replace the entire line okay so you always want to double check that especially if you're trying to turn a Schrader valve out and it will not come out more than likely it was not designed to come out so just keep that in mind the most common reason I found for leaks in a car's air conditioning system is after people have done their own repairs they replaced an AC compressor a line or a hose or something of that nature and I found that people have forgotten to tighten a connection port down they forgot to put a o-ring back in the system they forgot to check to see if the old o-ring was busted up or something of that nature whenever you're replacing something at a connection port with your AC system there will always be an o-ring I highly advise you to use a new o-ring and before you bolt down anything get yourself a can of PAG oil PAG oil it's already in your system and coat your new o-ring first before you bolt anything down okay most of the time people will replace an AC compressor they'll call me the following week and say hey I replaced an AC compressor I charged up the system the air was blowing really cold this week it's blowing warm air again what's wrong nine times out of ten I will refer you back to where you did the work and that's usually where they find the problem at okay most people assume that a vehicle's air conditioning system consists of an AC compressor a couple of lines or hoses and that's it for the most part that is incorrect guys what you see in front of you is a list of other components within your vehicle's air conditioning system that work alongside your AC compressor to provide you cold air in your vehicle what I'm saying guys is after you do the minor checks like I showed you underneath the hood you could possibly have a problem with any one of these parts that could be the reason as to why you're not receiving cold air inside of your vehicle for those of you with GM vehicles that need to replace the high side service port only there is the part number CRV makes the socket you can find it online eBay etc for those of you that have questions for Dorman about any of the parts they make there is their phone number hit option 2 they're very good about answering the phone at Dorman now to understand how to figure out if any of these items here have failed what you really need is one of these AC gauges and you can purchase these at Harbor Freight or your local auto parts store Amazon any place online okay these readings here work along with the different parts that I've showed you on that piece of paper so the parts in the gauge is one part of figuring out like what what's wrong with a part on this piece of paper under the parts list category you also need to understand the numbers okay in front of you 
there's a system that goes along with that gauge in those parts if you're at a certain reading it tells you that this is wrong if you're at this reading it tells you this may be clogged that's how we're able to determine um, if you have a failing part like an expansion valve a clogged orifice tube there are readings that go along with it you guys can screenshot this and check it out later okay but um, if you really want to diagnose your own system using one of those gauges that I just showed you you need to understand the system the number system that goes along with it okay it's fairly simple for the most part make sure you screenshot this they make many many different types of Schrader valve removal tools you can find these online at Amazon um, eBay they're about 20 bucks these are designed to go over your high side and low side service port and allow you to remove the Schrader valve without losing Freon from your system so you don't have to empty your system of Freon and then charge it up again there are plenty of videos out there on YouTube that will show you how to utilize these simple tools. I own a set. They're not bad to have anyway, guys. Okay? I'm almost done, guys, but I want to make something clear to you. Never overfill your air conditioning system with Freon. Okay? Never. You can destroy the AC compressor this way. So, like, if you're in the yellow or in the red, the chart that I showed you with the uh, writing on it sorry guys this chart this is designed to help you figure out why you would be in the red and stuff like that okay so I just want you guys to know that I want to give you one more look at the parts list so you realize that there are many many other components besides an AC compressor and some hoses that are associated with your vehicle's air conditioning system. If you should have a question about any of the parts being displayed in front of you, go to Google and ask Google, what does an AC condenser or an AC expansion valve do in my car or truck? You will get some sort of response back. You can also go to YouTube and probably more than likely will find a video where someone will explain to you what these parts are and or show you how to replace them. For those of you who have asked me where is your orifice tube located in your General Motors trucks, typically they would be around the receiver and dryer someplace, guys, okay? You want to look for a long line like this and two nuts connected together. The orifice tube is about this long, okay? To remove the orifice tube, you want to decompress your air conditioning system before you break these nuts loose. FYI, whatever color orifice tube you remove, if it's a green one, put a green one back in there. If it's a red one, put a red one back in there. It's done for a reason. You can get an orifice tube tool remover to remove this or a pair of needle nose pliers and just grab it. The orifice tube doesn't push but so far inward guys it's really easy for the most part just take note as to how it came out try and put it right back in the same way you took it out make sure your connections are nice and tight when you're done some orifice tubes are located up here on some vehicles you have to remove the receiver and dryer to get to this nut in the orifice tube some orifice tubes are down in the corner on trucks but there's always going to be a double connection like this and a line a long semi long line because the orifice tube again is about that long so I hope that answers the question in reference to the orifice tubes all right folks so that's it that's all the information that I can give you on how to diagnose your air conditioning system and or make minor repairs the air conditioning system is not as complicated as most people think it is just do your research whenever you break loose a bolt to replace a line or the AC compressor itself okay you want to make sure you check the o-ring put a new o-ring in dip the o-ring in pag oil make sure that all connections are tight okay and never assume just because the AC compressors clutch did not spin that the AC compressor is dead 
Remember, before I go, all air conditioning systems must have a certain amount of Freon in the system in order for the AC compressor to kick on and this clutch to start spinning. So if you have a really large hole where all of your Freon is leaking out before it makes it to the AC compressor, this will never kick on, okay? So just be mindful of that, guys. And finally, guys, when searching for leaks, make sure the engine is cold after you've run the air conditioning system. And take your time and look around, because sometimes that leak can be really tiny, okay? But it's always going to glow. So that's it, guys. Hope the video has been helpful. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time.